Welcome to this course on services marketing. I am Zillur Rahman, professor in the Department of Management Studies at IIT Ruki, and now we will start with module 2. As you have seen in module 1, the first three modules that is module 1, 2 and 3 are on new perspective on marketing in the service economy. We have talked about module 1. Now, uh, we will continue with the same uh, discussion in module 2 and we will be talking about how to be familiar with characteristics of services and the distinctive marketing challenge they pose. So, there are some characteristics of services and because of, the, and because of those characteristics, there are some distinctive challenges for marketing that uh, these characteristics poses. And then we will understand the components of the traditional marketing mix and how they are applied to services. Now, this is the overview that we had started talking about uh, in the first module. So, uh, we have talked about uh, why study services uh, and we have talked about why study services, then we have also talked about the various service industries, then we have also talked about the uh, key trends uh, uh, in the global economy and, uh, in, and also in the domestic, uh, the domestic economy. Now, let us continue with the, uh, with the second module and in this module, now let us, uh, we, now we, we are talking about the definition of services and then we will move on to the categories of services by type and so on and so forth. So, now let us start understanding the definition of services and how it has evolved over a period of time. So, the historical view that started with Smith in 1776 was that services are different from goods because they are perishable. Then we moved on to uh, that. We then we move on to 1803. Say said that uh, services are immaterial, and consumption cannot be separated from production. So now you uh, you see that we started that uh, we first started that uh, services are different from goods because they are perishable, while goods are not perishable. And then we moved on. Say said in 1803 that uh, services are immaterial. Big and the consumption cannot be separated from production. It means that consumption and production has to be done at the same time. Now, the fresh perspective is, is, uh, is that there leads to benefit without any kind of ownership. In products, we own something and then we get benefits. In services, they lead to benefits without ownership of anything. According to Lovelock and uh, Gumanson, services involve a form of rental through which customers can obtain benefits. Now, the first is the payment made for using or accessing something usually for a defined period of time instead of buying it outright and it also allows for participation in network systems that individuals and organization could not afford. So, there is a network that no uh, network uh, that allows participation in that and it is not possible for any individual or organization. To, to make that kind of network. There are five broad categories of services within the non-ownership framework. So, now we are talking of a non-ownership framework where we just get benefits without owning the things. So, these are the five categories are rented goods, uh, goods services, defined spaces and place rentals, labor and expertise rentals, access to shared physical environment and access to and usage of systems and networks. Let us look at each one of them, what, what uh, it means uh, when we say rented goods or services. So, these services enable customers to obtain the temporary right to use a physical good that they prefer not to own. For example, we can hire boats and then we also hire uh, fancy dress costumes we do not want to own them because we will not be using them in the long term. So, they are to be used uh, once, uh, once in a while, therefore, we hire them, we rent them and pay, pay uh, we, we take them and pay a rent for the time that uh, we are using those uh, goods. Another is defined space and place rentals. Customers obtain use of a defined portion of a large space in a building vehicle or other area that is for example, suit in an office building, a seat in an aircraft obviously, no one, own, no one owns a seat in the aircraft. So, we hire the seat, we rent the seat for, for a particular duration moving from place x to y 
and then we pay for that. The third is labor and expertise rental. Customers hire other people to perform work that they either choose not to do for themselves, for example, cleaning your house, or are unable to do because they lack the necessary expertise or they do not have that kind of tools or they do not have that kind of skills, for example, car repairs, surgery, etc. The fourth is access to shared physical environment. These environments may be located indoors or out, outdoors. In return for a fee, customers rents, rent the right to share use of the environment with other customers. For example, we go to museum and there are other customers who have also paid the fees and we also pay a fees to, uh, to move around the museum and look at uh, the various things that are there. Then there are theme parks and gyms. So, we, uh, we go to the gyms, we pay a fee, use the equipment and then we come back. So, here we are accessing a shared physical environment with other customers. Then there, there is access to and usage of systems and networks. Customers rent the right to participate in a specified network such as telecommunication, utilities or specialized information services. So, all of us road, uh, use roads and, and so on and so forth and we, we, we pay a fee for that. In many instances, two or more of this category can be combined. For example, when we hire a taxi, we are hiring both a driver as well as, well as a vehicle. If we undergo surgery, you are in essence hiring a skilled team of medical personnel as well as, rent, uh, as, well as we also rent temporary but exclusive use of specialized equipment at a hospital. So, now there are various kind of combination that, uh, that may arise out of these uh, services. Now, let us see what is the definition of services. Services are economic activities. So, the first important point is that they are economic activities that are performed by one party to another. So, one party, so there are two parties, one party perform a service to another party. They are often time based. These performances bring about desired results to recipients, objects and other assets. So, these are economic activities that are performed by one party for to another party, they are time based and these performances bring about the desired results to the recipients or the objects or other assets. So, they, they, uh, so you bring a car for, uh, for repair, so uh, uh, the car is repaired, so they, then the service is performed on the car. When you go to a doctor and, and get medicine, then the service is being performed on the person. So, in exchange for money, time and effort, Service customer expect, expect value from access to labor, skills, expertise, goods, facilities, networks and systems. However, they do not normally take ownership of the physical elements involved. So, that is the, the, the prime focus of definition of, in definition of services that we are not taking ownership of physical, uh, physical uh, elements that are involved in it, but we are getting the benefits of those physical assets and we pay for them on a time based uh, pricing method. Now, let us look at the service products versus customer service and after sales service. So, what are these things and how they are different from each other? So, how service product is different from customer service and after sales service? So, a firm's market offerings are divided into core product elements and supplementary services element. So, this market of offering is made up of two things. One is the core product element. So, that is the one thing and another is supplementary service element. So, so a market offering is equal to the core product element plus supplementary service elements. There is a need to distinguish between marketing of services that is when service is the core product. When we are marketing the service itself, then there is a need to distinguish when we are marketing through services, when good service increase the value of a physical product, when this service, this supplementary service is good and it increases the value of the core physical product. 
So it is not only the core physical product that we are paying for, but also the good service that comes along the, or that is needed along with that. Now these are examples of good companies that uh, goods companies that are expanding into services. For example, Boeing. So they also have all those kind of maintenance and uh, all those kind of services. John Deere, IBM has moved from being a product to a uh, product to now they are a purely service company. SAP, Otis, Symantec, GE. Procter and Gamble. So, these are some good uh, service, uh, good services, that, uh, goods companies that are moving to services. Let us look at the examples of service industries. One service industry is healthcare. So, all those hospitals and medical practice and dentistry and eye care, they are covered under this uh, service industry that is called as healthcare. Then there are some professional services, for example, accounting, legal and architectural services, these are called as professional services because they are provided by profession, uh, professionals. Then there are financial services for example, banking, investment advising and insurance. Then there are hospitality industry that includes restaurants, hotels and motels and bread and breakfast and ski resorts and, and camps and so on and so forth. And then there are others for example, hair styling pest control, plumbing, lawn moving and maintenance, counseling services and health clubs. These are the four categories of service services when we are looking, the, uh, look, looking at them uh, from a process per perspective. So one is people processing, another is possession processing, then we have mental stimulus processing and information processing. So now here the important thing is look at in the first case, people are being processed. In the second case, possessions are being processed. In the third case, the mental stimulus is being processed. And then in the fourth case, the information is being processed. So this is the process perspective to services. And this leads to four types of, uh, four categories of services. In this matrix, we will look at these four, uh, four type, four categories of services. Now of one axis, it is the name of the service act. So, whether people are being processed or possessions are being processed. On the another axis, it is the name of the service act that is whether there uh, the tangible action is taking place or intangible action, action is taking place. So, now let us look at this first quadrant where the name of the service act is the people and the name of, uh, and then we are looking at the tangible action. So, when tangible action is happening on people that becomes people processing. For example, that means services directed at people's body. For example, hair stylist. So, you have to be there when the hair styling is being done. Passenger transportation. So, uh, the person has to be there for in, uh, when, uh, when he or she wants to be transported. And then healthcare. So, normally a person should be there uh, in, the, in the medical facility so that uh, the healthcare can be taken care of. When some tangible action is taking place on possessions, so that becomes possession processing that is services directed as at the physical uh, possessions. So now this uh, tangible action is being taken on possessions. For example, freight transportation, while passenger transportation was in this quadrant, freight transportation is in the second quadrant because now freight is to be given and then it will be transported. Laundry and dry cleaning services, now you have to give your clothes in order to be dry cleaned and then repair, of, repair and maintenance of your computers and ACs and automobiles etcetera etcetera. So that is possession processing. In the third case, mental stimulus is being processed. So, on people there is some kind of intangible action that is taking place and th that is called as mental stimulus processing. So, services are directed at people's mind. For example, education. So, that happens on people's mind. Advertising, public relations and physiotherapy. The, these are the examples for mental stimulus processing and in the fourth quadrant we have information processing that is when intangible 
actions are being taken on possessions for example accounting banking and legal services so these are four categories of services from the process perspective let us look at each one on uh, each one of them in in some detail so let us start talking about people processing from ancient times people have sought out services directed at themselves including transportation food lodging health restoration and beautification here the important point is that the customers must physically enter the service system so they must enter the service factory that is a physical location where people or machine or both create and deliver service benefits to customer so don't get confused with what the service factory is it is the facility or the physical location where where there are people and machines and they are used to create and deliver services uh, to the customers so in people processing the person himself or herself has to go there to the service factory in order to in order to uh, to get that service now what are the implications of people processing the first is that the service production and consumption are simultaneous so when you go there then service will be delivered on you it is not that you are not there and the service is delivered so you have to be there in the service factory in order uh, to uh, in order that the, uh, the service is is delivered there is a need for active cooperation of the customer in the service delivery process so person will have to keep on telling about his or her requirement and then service will be will be tailored according to or customized according to his or her requirement therefore there is a need for careful consideration of location of these service operations where it is easy for customers to reach the design of service processes and the service environment so there is a uh, there, there is a requirement on the location where the service operations are are there the design of the service processes so that the customer does not have to have to hang around for a longer period of time and the service environment that it should be conducive environment and there is also a need for demand and capacity management maybe you have more number of employees and only and there are no customers or you have lesser number of employees and there are lot lots of customers so that also creates a problem and we also have to look at the output from the customer's point of view what is the output that the customer wants let us move on to the next category that is possession processing so customers they ask service organization to provide tangible treatment for some physical possessions that is a house that has been invaded by the insect so uh, they are buying a pest control uh, service the elevator has malfunctioned so they have asked the elevator company to uh, to uh, to rectify it the uh, screen of of a mobile phone a smartphone has broken down so that uh, that uh, screen has to be changed and you have a sick pet so now there there will be some kind of possession some kind of processing that will happen on your house or the elevator or the smartphone or the pet so it is not happening on the person himself but also but it is happening on the on the possessions that are owned by that person what are the implications of this for uh, services so uh, the implicate the first implication is production and consumption are not necessarily simultaneous so the production and consumption can happen at uh, at at various times and customers tends to be less involved in these services compared to people processing services now customer may not be there when the processing is happening because uh, the processing is happening on possessions and not the person himself so he or she may or may not be there when that service is being delivered what happens when mental stimulus is processed these services they touch people's mind and have the power to shape attitude and influence behavior so mental stimulus processing services include education so news and information professional advice and some kind of religious activities so they happen on 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 they they act as a mental stimuli and they act on the on the mind of the consumers obtaining the full benefit of such services requires an investment of time and a degree of mental effort on customer part now the customer need to invest time and also some kind of mental effort to take advantage of these kind of services 
what are the implications of this mental stimulus processing services that the customer do not have to be physically present in the phys in the service factory because that information or uh, lectures they ca they can be uh, they they, uh, they can be recorded and then they can be uh, uh, they can be viewed whenever the customer has time so the, they only access the information remotely when they need it so th in this case services can be invented for consumption at a later date or consumed or consumed repeatedly so when they when you have recorded you have recorded uh, uh, a lecture it can be uh, it can be uh, it can be viewed several number of times the last uh, category is that of information processing so information can be processed by information and communication technologies which are commonly referred to as ict and or or by the professionals who use their brains to perform information processing and packaging information is the most intangible form of service output however it can be transformed into a more permanent and tangible forms like letters and reports books or files in any type of format there is a, the, it is difficult to differentiate between information processing and mental stimulus processing because on the face of it both of them they look the same now let us look at the examples if a stock broker performs an analysis of a client's brokerage transaction it seems like information processing however when the result of the analysis are used to make a recommendation about the most suitable type of investment strategy for the future now it looks like mental stimulus processing because he has applied certain some kind of knowledge in order to get some kind of output so it is not only about information processing that he is doing therefore for simplicity we will periodically combine our coverage of mental stimulus and information processing services under the umbrella term of information based services so information based services will include mental stimulus processing plus information processing so this is the broad term that will be using for these two services then they are combined un under the umbrella term that we will be using later on that is information based services now what are the marketing challenges that are posed by services as such can the marketing concepts and practices developed in manufacturing company be directly transferred to service organization where no transfer of ownership takes so now our problem is that in products there is a transfer of ownership and then for that concept we have developed some kind of marketing concept now will these marketing concepts and practices hold true or will remain the same when we are when we are talking of uh, when there is no transfer of ownership so i do not own that thing while in product i used to own that thing so now this is the question and the answer is often no so there is a need to have different kind of marketing for services vis-a-vis -vis a product services tend to have different features from goods including the frequently cited four characteristics the first characteristic is intangibility the second characteristic is heterogeneity that is it means variability of quality the third characteristic is inseparability of production and consumption so either the person or the possession has to be there in order to uh, serve, in order for services to be delivered and the four character and the last characteristic is that of perishability so these are the four important and they are frequently cited characteristics characteristics of services and they also uh, uh, can be used to differentiate between a good and a service intangibility heterogeneity inseparability of production consumption and perishability let us look at the differences and the implication and marketing related uh, related topics so most services product cannot be invented 
that is the output is perishable. Implication is that the customer may be turned away or have to wait in order to get the service. So, there is smooth demand through promotions, dynamic uh, you have to smoothen the demand through promotions, dynamic pricing and reservations. The work with operations to adjust the capacity. When we are talking of intangible element usually, domi uh, usually dominate the value creation that is service is physically intangible. So, customers they cannot taste, smell or touch these elements and may not be able to see or hear them. In that case, they are harder to evaluate services and distinguish that from competitors. Now, in this case, what should marketing do? do? They should make services tangible through emphasis on physical cues, employ concrete metaphors and vivid image in advertising and branding. Another characteristic is services they are often difficult to visualize and understand that is services is, mental, uh, is mentally intangible. So, customers perceive greater risk and uncertainty in buying the services. Therefore, the companies have to educate customers to make good choices, explain what to look for, document performance and offer guarantees. When the customer may be involved in co-production that is if people processing is involved the service is inseparable. So, therefore, customers interact with the provider or equipment or facilities and systems and the poor task execution by customer may hurt productivity, spoil the service experience and curtail the benefit of that service. In that case, the companies have to develop user friendly equipment, facilities and systems, train customers to perform effectively, provide customer support. When people may be the part of the service experience, then the implication is uh, uh, implications for appearance, attitude and behavior of service personnel and other customers can shape the experience and affect satisfaction. In that case, there is a need to recruit and train and reward employees to reinforce the planned service concept, target the right customers at the right kind, right time and shape their behavior. So, when we have, when the difference lies in operational inputs and output, then it is harder to maintain consistency, reliability and service quality or to lower the cost through higher productivity. It is difficult to shield customers from results of service failures. So, now we have to set quality standards based on customer expectations. Then we have to institute good service uh, recovery procedures and automate customer provider interaction. When that the time factor of uh, assumes greater importance, then there is a need to find ways to compete on the speed of delivery, minimize burden of waiting and offer extended service hours. When the distribution may take through through non-physical channel, then we have to see, then the uh, companies have to seek to create user friendly secure websites and free access by telephone. Now, this is a spectrum that shows the tangible to intangible dominant uh, uh, dominant products and services. So, in the on this axis we have intangible element on this tang on this axis we have tangible or physical elements. Now, you see internet banking is high on inten intangible element while salts and detergents they are high on on the physical elements. These are the three types of qualities that are used to evaluate goods and services. Now, you see that most go goods they are high on search qualities. Most of the goods they are high on search qualities and most of the services they are high on credence and there are uh, in between there are experience qualities. So, it covers some kind of goods and some kind of services for example, restaurant meals and vacations and haircuts and child care. So, th these uh, these uh, services they are high on experience while clothing, jewelry, furniture they are high on search. So, search means that you can uh, you, you, you can evaluate before you make purchase. Experience is that you you, you, you go there and you, you enjoy the service and then you are able to evaluate, but credence means that you are not able to evaluate even after you have consumed the service or it is very difficult to evaluate a service even after you have consumed them. Now, let us look at the 7 P's of services marketing. All of us know the first 4 P's that is product, price, place or distribution and promotion or communication. In services, we need 3 more P's, the process, physical environment and people. Now, in uh, uh, let us look at how the traditional marketing mix is applied to services. The, uh, the product element, the, uh, uh, let us talk of the product element, 
Service product lie at the heart of the firm's marketing strategy. So, the service product consists of a core product that meet customers primary needs and then there are a array of supplementary service elements that are mutually reinforcing services. Uh, uh, the next P is the price and the other user outlay that they pay. So, like product value payment is very important in, in allowing a value exchange to take place. Pricing strategy is highly dynamic while price levels adjusted over time according to factors like customer segment, segment, time and place of delivery, level of demand and available capacity. Now, customers by contrast see price as the key part of the cost they must incur to obtain the desired benefit. So, service marketers therefore must not set only prices that target customers but are willing to pay, willing and able, and able to pay but also understand and seek to minimize where possible other bundlesome outlays such as additional monetary cost and the time spent exposure to negative sensory uh, experiences. Now, most services cannot be uh, invented, so therefore that involve action or performances and they are temporary in nature. Therefore, there is a need to have dynamic prices so that we are able to match the demand and supply. To conclude, we begin this module by understanding the, the concept of service. Next, we have discussed about the four broad categories of service as based on the process perspective. Finally, we have learnt about the traditional marketing mix as applied to services. These are the three books from where the material for this module has been taken. Thank you.